Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Bigley, and I'm the Executive Coordinator of Social Sciences. My name is Tori Orrin, and I'm the Senior Agronomist specializing in land reclamation. I'm Tim Neemstra, and I'm the Executive Surveyor. My name is Noah Soroka, and I'm the Directing Engineer. And I'm Anna Moles, the Head Manager of the Economics. We're working on building small earth dams for year-round water access to less developed countries, particularly Zimbabwe, that find themselves struggling to find available clean water. To do this, we have to determine how much material would be needed to build the dam, how long the construction would last, and the details referring to the water availability and structure aspects and design. For this particular project, our team assisted a development organization to find an appropriate site for a dam. In Zimbabwe, small earth dams put water during the rainy season, November to April, which allows crops to be grown in and clean drinking water to be accessible in the dry season. A dam in an ideal location can bring the most amount of clean and available water to poor rural communities in Zimbabwe, which is the purpose and goal of our team. The outline of the catchment has been identified from the map. The area of the catchment can be measured by working out a scale. We made up a rectangle to include the entire area of the catchment and then subtracted the four right triangles approximately to find the area. So now we are trying to gain access to not only the water, but the land as well. So the question is, who do we talk to in order to get that access? It is important to include the local authorities, the chief of the local tribe, along with potential future users. We use gathering time to determine the time it takes after the rain starts for the water flow to reach its peak value. In other words, we want to know how long it takes for the flow of water to be at its highest. To solve for this, we use the formula for gathering time, which is shown here. We plug in the given values on page 44 of the packet for the area of catchment, the mean breadth of catchment, and the speed of water flow into the formula. Using this information, we calculated the gathering time for a dam with these specifications to be one hour and four minutes. To find the width of the spillway and the depth of water at the center of the riverbed, we use the graph. It is kind of hard to tell, but the spillway starts at 135 meters and ends at 167 meters. Then, we subtracted the two to find the width of the spillway. The width of the spillway ends up equaling 32 meters. Then, to find the depth of water at the center of the riverbed, we found where the riverbed starts and ends and subtracted the two numbers to get 4.1 meters. The peg distance is used to show workers what and where materials need to be excavated in order to build the dam foundation. We know that the maximum crest height is 3.5 meters. Then to find the bottom length, we use rise over run, which is 1 over 2. So we use cross multiplication, 1 over 2 equals 3.5 over x. 3.5 times 2 equals 7. So 7 meters is the bottom of the triangle, and it's 1.5 more meters to the center. So we add 1.5 to 7 and get 8.5 meters. Now we need to excavate excess material in order to make room for the dam. Now if the dam is to be 120 meters long, with the cutoff trench being 1.5 by 1 meter, after you multiply those together for the simple volume equation, length times width by height, or 180 meters times 1 meter times 1.5 meters, you get 180 cubic meters of material that needs to be excavated. The first step in this problem is to draw ourselves a picture, then apply all of our given information to this picture. But for this problem, we need to find volume. The formula for volume is length times width times height. Then we use our given info to find each selection. After we find each individual selection solved for, we add them together, which in this case, the fill material needed is 491 meters cubed. Riprap is a term used to describe a large pile of rocks placed near the dam to prevent erosion. The information that was given states that we need about 180 tons of rock to complete the riprap and that there is a truck that can carry five tons at a time, three times a day, and the villagers have agreed to work three days per week. So, if we take the five tons and times that by three truckloads, that equals 15 tons, and if we times that by three days per week, that equals 45 tons per week. 
And then if we take the total number of 180 tons of rock and divide that by 45, we get a total of four weeks that it will take to complete the riprap. In Zimbabwe, clean water is not readily available. However, with the help of dams, people can be provided with the water they need. If the dam is not in a proper location with proper characteristics, it will not be as helpful as it could be. Because of this, our job is very important. Determining land agreements, designs, amount of materials, and estimated time is vital in the health and nature of the people in these areas. Our calculations and measurements are pertinent to the building of the dams, and using this information, we can answer these questions. Is there a suitable site? Would anything important be flooded? Is the soil the dam site suitable? What is the dam needed for? And by answering these questions, we make our final decisions about the location of the dam. When all the measurements are determined, and, uh, and all of the research is complete, and all of the questions are answered, we know that we have done our job, and many people will benefit from that. Thank you for taking the time to hear our research, and have a great day.